Good afternoon, everybody. This is episode nine of the Clean Hamster Podcast. My name is Dean, and I'm back. I'm back, baby. I'm back, motherfucker. Yeah, yo, motherfucker. Okay, that was the intro. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. I'm on my. I'm on my shit. I'm doing my podcast. This is fun. We're almost at 10 episodes, which is fun. Well, I'm almost at 10 episodes. Actually, you know what? We are because I have listeners and I love every single one of you. Okay? But I'm here by myself. I'm solo. I'm riding solo. I'm riding solo. Solo. Man, I'm feeling good tonight. I'm in my hands and I feel so right. Oh, you know? Anyway, I am. I was, uh, I wanted to, I got some, I got some stories, I got some fun things to talk to you guys about, uh, I had a pretty good week, I, uh, had an allergic reaction to something the other day, which was weird, I ate some fucking weird nuts, and my, uh, I, <laughs> these nuts, <laughs> I, I ate some weird nuts, okay, and, I don't know, I woke up and my eyelid was swollen, it was fucking weird, and then I, anyway, I took some Benadryl and now it's fine, anyway, I had a good conversation with some people at work the other day about drugs and drug use and whatever the fuck. And we were talking about weed and coke and shrooms and acid and stuff. I've never done acid. I've never, I've never gone above. Uh, I, you know what? I'm being honest. I've smoked weed. I've, um, I've done cocaine. I have also done mushrooms. And oh, and one time when I was 16, my friend gave me a. Uh, an oxy pill which made me feel not very good and also i found out why people are addicted to those because i couldn't get out of bed like i was like i am i remember when i I woke up the next morning and i was like oh my god i could lay here till i die i don't care if my family ever sees me again like i get that's the most addictive pill on earth it made me feel fucked it was insane and i would kill for another one (laughs) um no but uh I, um, we were talking about mushrooms, and mushrooms are, are fun. I've done mushrooms twice. First time I did mushrooms, though, I, I, I was very... I'll never be in this position again, because here's the thing. I was on a beach in Vancouver, British Columbia, with my then-girlfriend. We're not together anymore. But, like, you know what I mean? I'll never be in that position again. And that's what made my first shrooms trip so great, is because I was like in the middle of like a good relationship, a good, well, as good as a long distance relationship could be. I was visiting her in Vancouver, right? But it was the summer. We were at a beach. It was gorgeous. The sun was out. The sun was setting. And I was like, oh, life is significant. And I was fucking starting to trip a little bit, but I wasn't like seeing things. I didn't eat that many mushrooms, but I was on a beach right next to my fucking girlfriend and there was a and and mountains were around me and it was just a place i had never been before by the way side note fuck vancouver as a city (laughs) not because i'm bitter about my relationship ending but like the city of vancouver sucks i don't like it i know people love it but i don't like that city british columbia as a as a as a province is gorgeous right Going out of that city is amazing. Seeing, you know, the earth out there is beautiful. But the city, the downtown core of Vancouver, mm, fuck that, all right? It's not very good. Anyway, back to my awesome shrooms trip. It's 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 interesting being high on mushrooms because, like, you, you guys know that feeling of, like, when you're about to burst out laughing the hardest you've ever fucking laughed in your li- life? Life? It's, it's like that the entire time. It's that feeling right before you're, you're like, <laughs> like you're just really happy and you're just like smiling at everything and you're, and you're looking at like a fucking flower and you're just like, oh, I get the universe. And you, and you're, and, and you think you'd, uh, you might be figuring it out, but I don't know. Like you have some profound thoughts and conversations and it's fun. It's emotional. It's, it's a big roller coaster, but it's a lot of fun. Right, you know, and it was, I was in a good setting, it was nice, it was beautiful out, good conversations and shit, it was fun, right, and that was also, that was, and that was just also like one of the, that trip was a crazy experience for me, that was the first time I took a plane to visit a girlfriend, it's so crazy because that happened about a year ago, like around now, like really strange, you know, we like 
that was a that was a stepping stone like in my life of just being like I had a relationship that was like you know regular we both lived in the same city and then eventually unfortunately she had to move away to go do school where she's from which was Vancouver and I was like all right fuck it let's try this out we'll stay together and we did and I ha- and I took two trips there she took two trips here we split flights it was really nice and like I met her parents and by the way this girl had two moms she uh, her 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 original father was a sperm donor and a lesbian couple bought her uh, when she was a little cup of sperm and they had her as a baby. Isn't that trippy as fuck? Because some people, some people were like, wow, like that's pretty cool. You don't have to deal with the whole like the the intimidation factor of like meeting meeting a girl's dad for the first time, right? People were, people were saying that to me. And I was like, yeah, I guess you're right for sure. I, you know, moms fucking love me, all right? But here's the thing, okay? When I met her, her, her lesbian couple parents, he, two moms are way scarier than one dad. That's a fact, okay? Because here's what I found out. Especially two old lesbians. They have no interest in men whatsoever. They don't fucking care about me, you know? Like, they don't give a shit. They, they, they don't care. They're, it's not like one of them's like, what are your intentions with my daughter? That's what they sounded like. <laughs> but like, they, they, were, they were just like, oh, here comes another man. You know what I mean? They were giving me, they were older women who did never give a fuck about men. And they're only like, you know, I, I assume they just don't like men. They don't. They don't prefer them. They don't really care about them. They're just like, we got our own thing going on and it's great. Why would I give a fuck about this, this little fucking hair gelled fucking kid who's dating our daughter you know what I mean it was just like I just got that vibe right away I got the vibe of just like oh great another boy you know what I mean like it just didn't I would have rather been intimidated by a scary man being like so you want to go smoke a cigar and have a beer and we'll talk about your future with my daughter I would have rather had that conversation than being than them being than them faking being like so like, what do you do? What's comedy is, are you funny? Like it was just nothing. I couldn't really, I couldn't get them to budge on, you know what I mean? And I just stopped trying after a while because I was like, they don't care about me. They're two older lesbians. They don't give a fuck about me. I'm a 21 year old boy. <laughs> like I don't have anything for them. I don't like, they don't give a fuck. All they have is their fucking Guy Fieri haircuts and, and their fucking, and, and their, and their, and their big jeans, you know? And their SUVs. And their Oakleys. A lot of Oakleys, for sure. But yeah, that was interesting. It was a crazy trip. And then, speaking of crazy trips, uh, I was on mushrooms at the beach. Let's get back to that. Uh, when I was on mushrooms at the beach, I started to feel them enter my system. And it was pretty great because I was looking at a sunset on the beach. And then, after a while, I was like, this is, this is awesome. This is awesome. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I kept laughing and smiling and like kind of crying. And it was really beautiful. And then, eventually, I, my brain was like, Oh, I just burped. Um, eventually, my brain was like, "Hey, Dean, uh, you haven't looked behind you since you, since you started being high on mushrooms." And then I was like, "You're right, brain. I haven't." And then my brain was like, "You wanna take a peek behind you? You wanna see what you wanna see what all that behind you looks like on mushrooms?" And I was like, "Oh, I don't know about that." Because here's the thing: when you're not high on mushrooms, you could just turn your head around and be like, "That's behind me. That's what life is." Anyway, back to life. But when you're high on mushrooms and you're like, I haven't seen that part yet, <laughs> high on mushrooms, you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. This will let me just let me calm myself down. Let me take some deep breaths. And it's all it's it, it's as simple as turning your head behind you, which is something we all do every day. But this time when I'm high on mushrooms, I'm like, okay, all I gotta do is look behind me. And by the way, I know what's behind me. There's like a boardwalk, a, like a fucking like a uh, a little like uh, a little like diner with like fucking tables and shit like we're at a beach there's a guy selling fucking mushrooms probably (laughs) there's a guy fucking you know selling necklaces and t-shirts there's people riding bikes there's kids there's dogs i know what's behind me but i'm like i haven't looked back there yet high on mushrooms what the fuck is this gonna be like Uh uh-oh rut row and then i would like turn my head and i would feel my i I would go to kind of do it and I would feel my vision just go like, woo, 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 woo. and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I'll ease into this. All right. And it's so nothing. It's still, like I said, just turning your head. It's simple as fuck. We can all do it. Owls can do it 360. 
But I'm not talking about owls. I'm talking about me high on mushrooms. So then it took a while, and eventually I broke through like this woo -woo 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 -woo, like little weird fucking force field. And eventually I just looked behind me, and, and it was, and it fucking, my brain broke. Like, it was, but I knew, I was like, this is regular. It's, but like, just being, everything is so fucking significant on mushrooms, and like, everything's so vibrant, and like, you're just like, holy shit, I know everything now. Because I only knew the 180. I didn't do the whole 360 thing. I didn't look all around me at the earth. And then eventually when I did, I was like, oh, now I'm really in the trip. And it was pretty great. And then eventually I tried to eat ice cream. And I was like, this tastes too nice. <laughs> and it was just something. And then I went to sleep and it was better. And uh, yeah, it was something else. It was pretty fun. That trip was something else because that was the first time I ever went away for two weeks. Just me. Uh, without my parents when I was a child. I, I went to the airport, took a four-hour flight to Vancouver, met, met her at the airport, you know, did all that shit. It was, some, it was a fucking crazy experience, and it's really crazy to think about now as well because, like, I also had never... That was also my first relationship, too. So I was doing couple stuff, and sometimes I'm very selfish, and it's hard, and, and it was tough for me to do couple stuff. There was one moment on this trip where I got, like, annoyed <laughs> that I wasn't by myself. So I'm such an asshole. Where I was, like, more like, her and I were getting on a bus. By the way, the bus is in Vancouver? Fuck them. Anyway, we were getting on a bus, and uh, no one was on the bus. And she stepped on before I did because I let her on first because I'm a gentleman. And she... There was, think about this, There's, it's an empty bus. Maybe one person is sitting like in the middle aisle. As the bus starts to accelerate, which means it's hard to stand up because we're on a bus, she turns around to me and just goes like, where should we sit? And I don't know why that day I was like easy to make, <clears throat> easy to fucking, you know, but like I was very fucking, I was easy to fucking aggravate. What am I, I can't even find words. I'm such an idiot. And, like, that bus is empty. And then she was like, where should we sit? And I was like, just sit. <laughs> and she was like, whoa, relax. And we're, like, and we're both, like, having trouble, like, standing up because the bus is accelerating. And I was like, why are we still standing? <laughs> it's, like, the only thing that would ever bother me. I was just like, just sit down. I was like, okay, I'm entering the buses first from now on. Because, like, why is an empty bus, like, stressful to like, where should we, it does not matter where we should sit, just sit, it's okay. Why are we still standing in the aisle like idiots fucking having trouble <laughs> keeping our balance? Just have a seat, there's so many open ones. And then like, why was it, uh, it it'll be for real up to me after that. Like she turned back, I don't know. You know what, it doesn't sound <laughs> that bad, but it really made me fucking aggravated at the time. I don't know why it did, but it was, I was just like, just sit down, fuck. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, Vancouver sucks, man. Vancouver's not. It's just weird, man. There's on every corner. There's just like old homeless native people yelling shit at you, drinking huge cans of beer, trying to sell their t-shirts and shit. And everyone's just kind of fucking. It was just a strange city. I don't know. But uh, it was it was fun. Like I had fun no matter what. It was cool. But uh, I won't really. Uh, for sure, actually, we'll never go back there again. But anyway, tonight I have a good night. I, you know, I finally have my, I finally have the weekend off. I booked my, I booked one a, a weekend off because I haven't had a weekend off in a while. I usually work with Jacob at this bar. It's around the corner from my house. And uh, tonight I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out with friends that I went to college with. These fellas, let me tell you, these fucking boys, I love them. They're, they're insane, and they're all. I met them in 2013 when I was 17 years old, all right? And, like, since then, we've kept in touch. We've, you know, we all live in the same city. They're, they are the funnest dudes, man. They're so fucking funny. And I can't wait to just fucking... I'm going to act like an idiot. I'm going to shotgun beers. I'm going to fucking scream. I'm probably going to whip my dick out. I'm going to be fucking out of my mind. And I can't wait. And these guys, fucking, man, they've been, they've been keeping me laughing forever. Well, since 2013. But, like... All my buddies, we all have these funniest stories when we lived in residence together, when we lived in, when when they, uh, when they we all had student houses and stuff. These guys had their own house. I didn't live with them. I lived with four girls in second year. Most of you guys probably already know that. But these guys lived in a house. They were like fucking, 
it's like they like no one else was allowed in this house except them you know what i mean like you would walk in and like their coffee table was filled corner to corner perimeter per, like everything everything every area of this coffee table was bongs beer cans pizza boxes fucking they didn't give a shit and it stunk like a motherfucker, but they would just fucking walk in, kick shoes anywhere, and just be like, I'm home, do homework for an hour, and then just skull beers and play Grand Theft Auto. It was, the, it was the fucking life, man. I loved it. It was so funny. Like, their parents weren't allowed to come in their student house. They're like, no, you can't see how we live. And they're like, come on, let's see. Like, I want to see how, I want to see your room. And they're like, no, you can't, because there's condoms everywhere bongs weed probably fucking other drugs and just so many empty beers and it smells like a fucking foot <laughs> these guys are fucking animals and they're so funny and then one time uh and then the year before that when we lived in residence one time i dared my friend to shit out a window and he did it we didn't even have to like really like razz him to do it like we were like come on do it he was like no we were like come on do it he's like all right fine i'll wait till i have to poo and we waited we waited till he had to crap and then he stuck his bum out a window <laughs> when it was cold outside and he fucking dropped a little turd on his windowsill and it fell down to the bushes and we and we laughed and laughed and laughed. And then his girlfriend at the time got mad at me because she said I talked him into it and I was like, ah, fix your relationship. So that was that was that. It's pretty funny. Uh <laughs> Anyway, uh, I think there's more I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I, uh, I wanted to talk about um, nursing homes. Because there was a nursing home that I walked by the other day that reminded me of when I used to go to nursing homes a lot when I was a child. Because I had a lot of old relatives who lived in nursing homes, which sucks. Because my parents are kind of older, which means their parents were kind of older. So I, I was familiar with three different nursing homes in the greater Toronto area. Fuck that. As a seven-year-old, that's not something you want to be familiar with. Here are the things you want to be familiar with as a seven-year-old. Your room. That's it. And, like, maybe your school. And, like, three or four friends. And, like, your backyard. And fucking i don't know like the tv a little bit like maybe some video games maybe just your toys your stuff but the other thing i was familiar with three different nursing homes when i was fucking seven okay that's not cool that's not tight but it wasn't really my choice we had to go visit these relatives before they fucking croaked okay and it scared me man like oh dude old people are something else already okay but old crazy people another fucking level let me tell you for free another fucking level because old crazy people are not only like louder but they just move a little quicker in the face their their eyes are fucked up they're just scary man especially as a seven-year-old where your fucking imagination is going and going I had old people show up to me in my nightmares that I saw that I had face to face, you know, confrontations with because not like I wanted to, but some of them would put themselves in my life if I walked near them in these fucking nursing homes while I was on the way to my grandmother's room. You know what I mean? Like they were fucked. I'd hear like I hear old people go nah! and I'd be like, what the fuck was that? And my mom would just and my mom would be like, just keep eyes front. It's OK. Just don't look. Just, it's OK. We're, we're going to be we're going to be in grandma's room soon. And I'd be like crying before I even saw my grandmother. And I'd be like, everyone who lives in this thing a fucking nut job and they're so scary Ugh. and they all have like white eyes and shit i think <laughs> from my memory i'm not sure but one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me in a nursing home this is for real my brother was there with me and my mom um we got in the elevator after visiting our our great aunt uh who is unfortunately no longer with us um because no shit, she was fucking a thousand when I was eight. And uh, we got in the elevator to leave, and um, my brother pressed the button. He pressed the button for lobby, but he accidentally didn't press the button for lobby. He pressed the basement floor. And I went, ruh oh. And as soon as those doors opened, there was the morgue. The morgue was right in front of us. 
and we saw a little room with metal tables. I don't, I'm not sure if I saw a body. My mom covered my eyes. Scarred. I'm scarred. My mom covered my eyes and she was like, Dean, don't look. And I was like, I fucking wasn't gonna. (laughs) Cause I knew what the morgue was. I knew what it was. And then my brother was like, I heard him like behind my mom's like hand over my eyes. I heard my brother like pressing like the door close button. He was scarred for sure. He was three years older than me. And then we went back up and we got in the car and my mom fixed it all by getting us McDonald's. And I got a happy meal with some toys in it. And you know what? To all those parents out there listening, even though there's no parents listening to this, get your kids McDonald's if you accidentally have them scarred for life. Okay? It'll fix everything. Mm -mm -mm, I'm loving it. All right, everybody. Uh, I wanted to talk about those things, and it's been 20 minutes, and that's been pretty good. I'll take that. Uh, I love all of you. And um, that was the ninth installment of the Clean Hamster Podcast. And uh, I would kiss every single one of you on the lips if I fucking could. But uh, unfortunately, I'm talking into a microphone, and there's... And that's all I can really do. And thank you so much for listening and enjoy the rest of your morning, 